Hello everyone, welcome back to this new episode of this pen test engagement in which we were able to gain access to the admin account of the Gemini Inc. Uh, web application using a brute force attack that we were able to perform thanks to Burp. We were able to configure a macro in order to bypass the anti c -surf token. In this video, we're going to explore these internal features and abuse a really interesting bug. Let's get started. And if we go to actions, we can actually edit the profile. You can update the username, the password, the group, the display name, the email, and save. I'm not going to do anything uh, just yet. I'm just going to save. So it says here info was saved. And if we go to the proxy, this is our request, which contains nothing but our parameters. Nothing really uh, popping out. Okay, what else do we have? If we go to profile, action, export profile, okay. Let's click on it. And all right, it's generating the uh, profile page, okay. And it's pointing to export.php. I wonder if we have this uh, file in here. Let's look for export.php. Nope, we don't have it. So this means that uh, this is an added feature, which doesn't exist in the uh, GitHub account. So we need to do some blind tests. I know that a lot of you enjoy doing fuzzing and black box testing. I prefer doing some kind of code review and combine it with black box. So essentially, kind of a white-ish uh, pen test. Okay, uh, this seems interesting. First of all, I'm just going to see what do we have in uh, our burp. Uh, because this is a binary file, we want to show it by clicking on show all, apply. And I'm just going to see here in the MIME type if there is any PDF. Mm. Yeah, this one says here app, but actually this is the get request to export, which returns a PDF. Okay, do we have any parameters here? Oh, nothing. Okay. Title creator is WK HTML to PDF version 0.12.4. Okay. I think that I've seen something related to this during a pen test, I guess. So if we just Google it, WK HTML to PDF, the command line tool to render HTML into PDF. Okay. I had uh, experience exploited a similar library to gain remote code execution on a server during a pen test. And I wonder if it's possible to do the same for this. Entirely headless and do not require display. Yep, okay. Library documentation. You know what? I'm just going to see if there are any vulnerabilities. So I'm just going to type exploit. Oh, file inclusion vulnerability. Remnant is widely used, open source PDF and image rendering utility. When used improperly, this utility can introduce high risk security vulnerabilities because it renders HTML content on the server side. Okay, it is a high risk target for both server side request forgery and local file inclusion vulnerabilities. That sounds promising. All right, what do we have here? So basically, we can send some polluted or poisoned data which contain an iframe that points to file etc pass wd. And then it would return. Oh, really? Okay. We can try that right now. So what I'm going to do is 
take that request that posted the user user's data, right click and send it to the repeater. And let's see if we can like maybe add it in the username. So that would be iframe. Just going to encode these properly and use the correct double quotes. And introduce some spaces. You know, just formatting the payload properly so that it works. So here we are forcing an iframe to be 500 width and 500 height. And that seems great. Now let's send it. Render. Oh, invalid username. Okay. Maybe we can try it on the uh, display name. Yeah, why not? I think we have we might have more freedom here. Let's send it. Render. Okay, info was sent. Perfect. I'm just going to refresh this page and uh, see if we get something. Oh, okay. So we have an iframe here which got generated. However, we don't see the uh, file etc.passwd. Okay. Well, whenever we hit a roadblock, we just go one step back. HTTP, maybe just try to fetch the same page, see if we uh, it works or not. Just to verify that the iframe actually works. Ooh, okay. We have the uh, content of that exact web application, but it's uh, rendered on the server itself. So the server is taking that uh, polluted input and trying to fetch that page for us. All right, so this is getting interesting. Do we have any other port, like maybe uh, 443? Maybe it's listening on the local host. So refresh the page. Mm, nope. Well, at least we know that this iframe works. So how can we force it to load a file? I'm going to continue learning about this vulnerability because it really seems promising. Okay, so it's trying to fetch here the uh, instance metadata for AWS. But since this is hosted on RootMe and not on AWS, I don't think it's uh, going to be useful. I wonder if there's any other resource that we can read about. Let's see. Let's see this one. High vulnerability in... Uh, yeah, so I think um, we are within the vulnerable range because our uh, version was 0 0.12.4. For complete description, go to vulnerability details. Okay, let's go to there. What I'm interested here in is uh, the references. Initial access via file. Okay, what do we have here? We recall the same vulnerabilities here, SSRF. So here they are trying to fetch the page. Okay, so it's they are they're trying to point it to their own server. Yeah, that could be interesting. Let's do that. So I'm going to collaborator get started. Copy to clipboard, go back to the repeater, put it just right here, and let's send it. Go back to our PDF generation, refresh the page. So we have the response from Burp, <laughs> so that's a good news and if we pull now we get dns and http request i'm interested in 
learning about the request headers. So the user agent is Apple WebKit and it's using Safari. I guess that's the headless uh, web browser, Apple WebKit. And it's using Linux. Okay. So it reinforces our first finding that this is this is a Linux server from port scanning, if you recall, in the episode one. And it's t coming from this IP address, which is located in France, where the servers of RootMe are hosted. Okay, that's, uh, that's really interesting. Um, can we, like, inject commands? Because that would be really, really interesting. Um, I published a video of how I was able to inject operating system commands. If you want to check it out, I am going to put it in the top right corner. So here I'm going to type host name. So if uh, this gets evaluated as a operating system command, we would receive a DNS query that contains the host name of the server. We send this and go back and refresh the page. We don't get any response from burp, which means that this didn't work potentially. We pull, yep, we got nothing, which means that our DNS uh, query was broken. So the backend doesn't evaluate our host name. All right, uh, but nonetheless, this is an interesting lead. And in the next video, we're going to dig deeper, do some research and find a way to leverage this vulnerability to get a foothold on the system. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the ring bell. Like this video if you enjoyed it and see you in the next video. Stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.